Mm hmm yes, mm hmm mm -hmm. yep, this looks good. I did a couple videos about the Sonic movie back in 2020, leading up to its release, and like, okay, I may have overreacted a little bit. <laughs> so let's do what any good channel does whenever a movie trailer drops and do a frame-by-frame -frame analysis of it, shall we? <laughs> But then, the trailer finally came on April 30th, 2019, and I have not been the same person since that day. <laughs> Next up, we have MatPat's Meth Lab. I'm MatPat! Today we're gonna be working the <laughs> diameter of Freddy Fazbear's rectum. <laughs> I can't be expected to fail at parkour all on my own. Lucky for me, I have a couple friends who are along for the ride. I want, I want this show again, but with like really controversial YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just fucking. We got EDP four four five to play Pocket Space. <laughs> While we're still on the topic of controversial redesigns, looking at one on the complete opposite end of the spectrum now. If you've ever thought your life was completely meaningless and devoid of any purpose, just remember that they were actually real people who got upset that they made Lola Bunny less hot in Space Jam 2. Oh no, I'm not kidding. It's honestly a neat idea for a show. I think we just picked the worst ones to watch. They did a Metal Gear episode and a Rocket League one, but the only ones I saw were the Mirror's Edge one and the FNAF one, obviously. Except the weird thing with the FNAF episode was that it actually had to be based on the fan game Five Nights at Candy's, because MatPat says in the episode that they couldn't actually get the rights to FNAF because of the movie coming out. Five Nights at Freddy's in less than two years. That's not the game, is it? I don't know, bro. I just watched the MatPat videos. <laughs> The director said that after watching the original Space Jam and feeling a bit uncomfortable with how Lola was presented in the movie, he set out to sort of like more appropriately update her for a kid's movie. I had no idea that people would be up in arms about a bunny not having boobs. That is a real quote from a film director. It's really well put together for the standard of YouTube Red series the other ones have gotten me used to. It got to a point where George and I just stopped talking and just started enjoying it. Whose money are we paying him? Yours, you dick. We'll get sponsors. You're a dick. Good one. You're a good one. Sorry, I'm just really engaged. Yeah, sorry, I'm just, sorry, no, I'm like, I started, I'm started enjoying, enjoying the episode. Yeah. <laughs> the production value is good. The jokes hit kind of hard. I'm sure that animal was a dick. <laughs> Of course you had all your usual petitions and angry tweets, but I think the larger problem at hand that people had here was that Mario's usual voice actor, Charles Martinet, was also there on the cast list, but it was relegated to a single line from a side character. Is it too much? Hello, Mario. Even before the movie came out, though, I never really thought that Mario had to have the Italian accent to work. But I say that as a very big fan of the 90s movie and the Super Show cartoon, where he sounds like he smokes like 40 packs a day. Ah, a nice cool show. <sighs> Illumination kind of responded to the outcry with Chris himself saying in a few headlines that his Mario would be unlike anything you've heard in a Mario world before. Well, I mean, technically he wasn't lying. The High Fructose Adventures of Annoying Orange was a cartoon, using that term very liberally, that aired on Cartoon Network for two whole years with a total of 60 episodes. It does have Tabuscus in it as the janitor at the supermarket that the show takes place in, which was like the only reason that I tolerated it as a kid for any more than 15 seconds. You guys all know how much I love the Annoying Orange on this channel. Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. Oh my god, that was just his normal voice. I think it definitely has to have the record for the highest body count out of any Cartoon Network show I've ever seen. Come on, Grapefruit. Put the zucchini down. As you wish. Oh my fucking god. He just... <laughs> just killed him. I was just saying, we have a body count of three in a Cartoon Network show <laughs> in three minutes of this one episode. And you know the worst part is they've all been malicious. <laughs> like, it's not like they're accidental, like... That's <laughs> not fucking He God. intended to murder him. <laughs> Do you think they had to sit down with the Cardo Network and exactly be like, so Grapefruit's gonna body slam this this broccoli into the ground? <laughs> so, I'm trying to sell that in a pitch meeting. <laughs> All right, so we have this grapefruit. It's a PNG of a grapefruit, but we're gonna superimpose a mouth. I swear to God, the kids love this. <laughs> superimpose a mouth. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Then yeah. some liquid fluid <laughs> is gonna leak out of Tabuscus's asshole from the roof. <laughs> Fall into the water and then they're all gonna get superpowers. Hold on, hold on, it gets better, it gets better. Hey, get right. your phone away. <laughs> Rest in peace, being puppy cat and the midnight gospel and inside job. Oh wait, never mind. No, it it got cancelled too. I love you, Netflix.